Hi guys, this is your host Nikesha, mental health consultant. This channel is all about mental health and on each video I give you guys tips on how you can be intentional in improving your mental health and well-being to achieve the vision you have for your life. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about anxiety. It's one of those words that we throw around a lot and we don't always know what it means. So in today's video, I'm actually explaining to you guys what anxiety is. And you know, in the mental health world, we distinguish between different types of anxiety. So what I'm actually talking to you guys about today is what we call generalized anxiety. I'm basically going to talk to you guys about what it is, what it can feel like, what the symptoms are, and why we even experience certain symptoms. So anxiety is when you're anticipating a threat in the future. We all experience anxiety from time to time. That's very normal. Um, so just because you experience anxiety from time to time does not mean that you have an anxiety disorder. But what I'm going to talk about today is what it actually means to have an anxiety disorder and specifically more of a generalized sort of anxiety disorder rather than specific things that you're afraid of. So for example, um, social anxiety would be a completely different topic. I'll talk about that in a different situation, but that's anxiety that's really specific to social situations. It's a fear of social situations. So you can think of it as social phobia. But today again, I'm just talking about general anxiety. So for you to be someone who has a legitimate anxiety disorder, that would mean that you're experiencing anxiety and worry about multiple things uh, more often than not over at for at least six months. Um, so you're not just worrying about, for example, social situations, or you're not just worrying about uh, COVID-19, <laughs> you're actually worrying about multiple things um, most of the time for at least six months. When you're living with anxiety, you may find yourself tired a lot of the time. You may find yourself, you know, irritable or on edge. You may find difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or maybe you have a full night's sleep, but you wake up and you're still really tired, so you didn't have a very good uh, sleep quality and the anxiety is actually starting to impair your functioning in different parts of your life so whether that's you know in school at work in your relationships with others it's actually affecting your daily functioning and when i say that it affects your daily functioning i mean that it actually you know, interferes with your ability to get things done, for instance. So let's say, for example, you got to write a test, but you're so anxious that you can't even write the test. Um, it's actually making you forget what you studied. Or let's say, you know, you're trying to read something or you're trying to watch a show and the things that you're worried about are interfering with your ability to even concentrate and focus on things. And another example would be you can't even sleep at night because your thoughts are just like you're ruminating on what happened earlier in that day and something that you feel like you made a mistake about. And a lot of the time, what you're worried about is completely out of proportion with how much time you're spending in thinking about it, with how much distress thinking about it is causing you. Um, you know, it's out of proportion with even the likelihood that this thing is going to occur for you. Now, I want to kind of distinguish this a little bit from fear. Fear is when you are worried about an actual or perceived threat that is imminent. Whereas anxiety is more so, it's not an imminent threat, it's a threat that you're anticipating can happen in the future. Now fear is very normal and natural for us to experience. It's the way that our brains keep us safe um, and ensure our survival, so that's completely normal. When it uh, becomes an issue, again, is when it starts to you know, hinder your ability to accomplish things and it's affecting you in different areas of your life and it's out of proportion with the actual threat of whatever it is you're afraid of. Now because anxiety um, affects us in different areas of our life, 
It'll also affect us in, for example, social situations. That's different from social anxiety where your fears are very specific to the social realm. Um, within generalized anxiety, you may still have some worries in the social sphere, but again, you're having worries in multiple areas. So, um, for example, in a social situation, when you have generalized anxiety, you may find yourself needing um, reassurance from others pretty often. You may find yourself very socially dependent on others. You may find that you're less empathetic towards others because you're needing a lot of re reassurance from them. So you're taking a lot more from others emotionally than you're giving back. Now, a good way to think about anxiety is stress, okay? Now, you can be experiencing stress and not have an anxiety disorder, okay? Um, but a good way to think of anxiety is to think stress. Now, stress can make it very difficult for us to sleep. It can make it very difficult for us to concentrate. And it can make it difficult for us to remember things because of the you know impairments to our concentration and focus. Now, the more we have a hard time with sleeping, the more we have a difficult time with concentrating, the more anxious we become. Because so then we become anxious that at nighttime we're not gonna be able to sleep. You know, we're tossing and turning and we're anxious that, you know, we're not gonna get enough sleep uh, to prepare us and fuel us for the next day. You know, let's say you're in a meeting and you need to focus and you're having a hard time with that. Then you become anxious because if you're not focusing in the meeting, then you're going to miss important things and it may affect your performance. So the anxiety starts to spiral. So anxiety happens when we start to question our ability to really, um, and adequately, address any stressors that are coming our way if we feel like we don't have control over a situation if we feel unsafe if we feel like you know socially rejected if we don't feel that we know what's coming our way so that fear of the unknown all of these things can cause anxiety that anxiety will start to feel it in our bodies when it gets to a certain point right so you're going to notice body aches headaches um, muscle tension if you have chronic pain it can worsen it it can cause stomach upset so like you know gi issues it can cause depression if you are a recovering addict then it can cause you to relapse it can weaken your immune system. It can cause or exacerbate physical health issues. You know, things like developing ulcers, high blood pressure. These are things that are related to stress. It can cause weight gain, especially in the abdominal area because of the cortisol that is released in the stress response, that stress hormone. So you can start to notice weight gain in your stomach area. It can speed up the signs of aging. So you may notice your face uh, starting to look older. It can cause hair loss. Um, it can, you know, reduce your libido. So you may find, let's say, for example, you're in a relationship and then you don't have as much of a sex drive anymore. It can cause sexual dysfunction. And I want to mention too that it's very common to experience anxiety and depression together because the symptoms tend to overlap. So I talk about this already in my other videos, uh, several of them. So I won't go in depth with it again here but basically when we're stressed we go into the stress response which is fight flight or freeze and that's basically our brains getting us ready to deal with whatever threat we're facing so what happens is you may start to notice your heart racing um, you know your blood glucose level goes up you know your muscles will tense um, you know you become hyper focused your you know, different hormones start to be released. So things like adrenaline, cortisol, norepinephrine. So things that prepare us for action. Um, but what happens is when you've been stressed for a long time, and we consider that chronic stress, after a while, our brain determines, you know, I cannot keep this going. If I continue to release cortisol, again, which is a stress hormone, it's going to become um, toxic to neurons. It's going to start to kill, um, you know, brain cells. So what happens is your brain starts to restrict the release of cortisol. And you may find yourself going about your day-to-day -day feeling pretty numb or others may, you may um, you know, describe you as being flat. 
But when that part of the brain that's associated with the stress response, we call it the HPA axis, when it's triggered, you may go from being flat to just like exploding. And at that point, your response to others will look, you know, like a major overreaction. And I talk about that a lot in my video on PTSD, my video on trauma. These are things that also happen with anxiety as well. So because in the stress response, you become hyper-focused on whatever the perceived threat is, that's actually why it becomes difficult to concentrate. So um, when you're hyper-focused in the stress response, you lose that higher order thinking. Your mental resources are now being dedicated to deal with whatever the stressor is. Now, there are a slew of things that can actually contribute to someone having anxiety. And one of those things is having poor or inconsistent nutrition. So when your eating schedule is erratic, when you're not really eating nutritious food, you're more so going with whatever is convenient or tastes good to you. When you're not getting enough sleep, you're not getting any physical exercise or enough physical activity. When you don't have you know, quality social connections or healthy, effective stress coping skills developed, um, if you're using things like marijuana, nicotine, tobacco, alcohol, caffeine, if you're dehydrated and you're not drinking enough water, low blood sugar, um, hormones, and hormones is a big one and it's important to really uh, be cognizant of because you may notice, uh, when, especially within the teen population, there being a higher prevalence of anxiety disorders, or even if you're pregnant. Um, so for example, if you experience being pregnant or you've you know, had a pregnant partner and you notice uh, they're worrying about a lot more things or their personality seems to be way off and their mood seems to be way off, um, you know, hormones, hormonal changes can really affect uh, someone to the point where it may lead to them developing an anxiety disorder. There could be hormonal issues within men too, and it's actually really good to get your testosterone levels and things like that taken a look at by your doctor. You know, going through menopause, that's not a period in life where you may experience hormonal changes. Neurotransmitter imbalances and neurotransmitters, we just consider it like brain chemicals. Anxiety can also be a learned behavior, something we may learn from our peers. So, you know, spending a lot of time with uh, peers who are quite anxious, we may find that we're becoming more anxious. It can come from parental modeling. So, you know, having parents who are highly anxious. Also, you know, anxiety certainly has a genetic component as well. So it could be a genetic predisposition. So just to kind of elaborate a bit more on the importance of nutritious and consistent eating when it comes to anxiety um, and also when I mentioned the neurotransmitter imbalances so neurotransmitters like I said we tend to think of it as brain chemicals but they are actually synthesized in our gut so what we eat actually really does play a significant role in um, the production of neurotransmitters so if you want to kind of put yourself on a good start to begin with um, you know, when it comes to your mood, eating healthy is actually one of those basic things that's really important for that. Just like also, you know, good quality and sufficient sleep and physical activity. So when I mention the parental modeling, it's extremely important for parents to model healthy, effective stress coping skills for kids because if you notice your child is highly anxious, it could, now it's not 100%, but it could actually be due to uh, what you're modeling or um, just them not having learned healthy, effective coping skills. Now you may actually not be modeling that and they could be getting that from their peers, right? Um, or they can get it from, um, you know, just even their, their temperament that they came into this world with. And then, you know, the environment may have actually just exacerbated it. Um, but it is something that's good to keep in mind is when it comes to kids, it's really important to model healthy, effective uh, coping for them. So you guys may be wondering, you know, well, what do you do about it? There are a slew of things that can be done for anxiety. Um, so I'm actually going to make separate videos for that. And I already have some posted as well. So I have an anxiety 
playlist. Um, so if you haven't taken a look at that, go ahead and check that out. In there, I actually give lots of tips on how to deal with anxiety, and I'm going to continue to roll out more videos on how to address anxiety as well as we go as time goes by so um, if you liked this video please hit the thumbs up icon to let me know and if you want to see more content like that um, you know go ahead and subscribe to this channel that way you can see whenever I release videos on this topic or any other mental health based topic please share this video with anyone you feel can benefit from it and um, yeah I'd love to read your comments so if you have any comments any questions please post those below as well and okay thanks guys and I will look forward to catching you at the next video